Hello, Steve. Hi. Thank you for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Um, so you have a really remarkable story. Um, you hand-coded Reddit in 2005, sold it in 2006, uh, walked away three years later from the company, and then returned. Somebody should write a book about as it. <laughs> it's a fantastic idea. I love it. Uh, returned in 2015. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Reddit had sort of begun to melt down at that time in 2015. So why don't you just describe what you sort of stepped back into? Sure. Um, so in 2015, I had been gone from Reddit at this point about five years, uh, working in a completely different company, uh, Hitmonk. We did travel search. It, it could not possibly be more different. And Reddit, uh, while I was away, a, a couple of things happened. One, they, they spun out from Condé Nast, who acquired us back in 2006. Um, they grew um, quite a bit during that time. And then they also faced a series of increasingly uh, crazy crises. Um, some right. Basically I, one a year. Yeah, and, ex and accelerating, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and so uh, the summer of 2015, uh, all that hit basically a crescendo. And, and it looked to me just as an outsider. At this point, I was just a, a normal civilian Reddit user. Uh, I thought the company was cooked. And this thing that you created, you thought it's just imploding right now. Yes, yes. Uh, the, the community was an open revolt. Um, the, the company wasn't productive. We were in the press for all the wrong reasons. Right. It was just a really dark time. So that was the context uh, in which I came back to the company. And, uh, and, and I told the, the company on that, that first day uh, something that is still very important to me. We are going to be, uh, I'm going to make you proud to work at Reddit, and the world is going to be proud that we exist. And that's what we've been up to the last couple of years. Yeah, so explain to me the state of, of things when you returned and what you have embarked upon since then, then to make those people proud to work at Reddit and make progress toward the world, thinking Reddit is a, a sure. yeah. worthwhile place. There's kind of two, two aspects to it. Um, internally, we had this interesting situation where we had, uh, we had people who loved Reddit. Like, uh, uh, the, the people at Reddit really love the platform. And they were at the company because they believed in the platform. The platform had probably touched their lives in, in, in some way, as it does for a lot of our users, mm -hmm. um, helping them through difficult times or providing them you know, a few laughs every day um, and, and, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. um, but the company itself was in disarray. And, and, and we had this funny uh, this behavior that I saw. And, and I would describe it as good people doing bad things. Right. And, and, and so the people. Uh, who worked at Reddit managers, I think their attitude was, you all are crazy, like their peers. I'm going to protect my team, which is you know, a, a noble thought, but also um, not great for collaboration. Right, totally dangerous for an organization. Yeah. yeah. And so just kind of breaking through that and, and, and getting people working together and, and getting the product moving forward and, mm -hmm. and looking for a few wins with the community, uh, who was also not you know, too pleased at the time. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and, and slowly over the next you know, year or two, started to chip away and started to make progress and, and got to a much healthier position. Right. Well, I mean, you've literally hired hundreds of people. Um, it went from, what, like 20-ish of the original who stayed to now you have more than 400 employees? That's right. Yeah. So which is the biggest team? You've got engineering and community management and trust and safety. Yes, yeah, so those are our largest teams are so EPD, so engineering, product, and design. So yeah. our technical team that builds the product uh, is our largest team, and then second is sales, uh -huh. so the, the monetization wow. group, and then we have very large community and trust and safety teams as well. And, yeah. and, and those are the the front lines of our uh, communication with the community. Right, and you've also embarked upon and well completed a massive redesign of Reddit. Um, one of my favorite quotes was from Bloomberg Business Week about what Reddit sort of used to look like. Uh, it, it said uh, that Reddit had all the aesthetic seduction of a phone book. Mm, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I actually really like the redesign, but I have heard that many users do not. Like something like 80% have have opted out of using kind of new Reddit. Is that true? And 
How, how are you thinking about that going forward? Yeah, that's actually not true. Oh, okay, um, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what the exact number is. Um, the number we track is how, what percentage of our DAU, our web DAU, so daily active users, yeah. are on the redesign. That's about 70% right now. Okay. Um, and that's been steadily growing. And we've, we've kind of gone in and out of how light a touch we have. You know, in, in the beginning, we were kind of just forcing people over and opting people in. Uh, not the most effective strategy, it turns out. Um, and so now we have a much, much lighter touch. And so now when you go to the, whether you go to the old site or the new site, you can easily get between them. Mm -hmm. And you know, we want to get people over because the product's good. Yeah. And so that's, that's been steadily increasing. We're in the middle right now of a big round of development for our moderators. Mm -hmm. So our moderators are the, their users who create the communities that make up Reddit. So Reddit's made up of 100,000 or so communities. Our moderators create the communities and shepherd them and so giving them really good tooling yeah. and, and new tools and more sophisticated tools is hopefully the, the carrot that'll, that'll move that group over. Right. So um, this is kind of a small question, but uh, you know, Reddit is absolutely massive. It's bigger than Twitter. There's more than 50,000 words typed into Reddit every minute, uh, I've heard. It's that. Uh, and <laughs> Um, so, I mean, but how much, do you know how much of that is in like private chat rooms or direct messages? I feel like there's kind of this discordization of the internet right now. And do you have any ways of tracking that? Like the uh, that is certainly knowable. I actually don't know uh -huh. off the top of my head. Um, the, I, I, the vast majority, what I do know is the vast majority of content on Reddit is actually in our comments. Mm -hmm. So um, Reddit is, is actually a fairly simple platform of posts, right, posts can be images, links, text. Actually, 60% of our posts are text. Yeah. And so it's one of the last outposts of, I think, text online. Um, but then for every post, there are five comments. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's where we see the, the kind of vibrant community of Reddit. And if you spend any time online, I, I think people are generally trained to just assume the comment sections of, of, of any website, whether it's a, a publisher or Facebook, it's just like the most toxic place online and they're just not very fun. Reddit's actually the opposite. Uh, we have incredibly um, uh, vibrant conversations and, and, and the, the thing that I think is actually really cool about this is when we were smaller, I used to look at the comment sections on our, our peers' websites and just think, oh, when we're that big, um, Reddit's gonna go the same way. Well, actually wondering, are we gonna go the same way? Are we gonna continue to have what we have? Uh, now that we are that big, um, I see our conversations are still really good and interesting. And so the, one of the main lessons that I've learned at Reddit is that you, if you put people in the right context, they're actually more funny and interesting and collaborative than I think we give people credit for. And, and that's one of the things I think Reddit does really, really well. Right. I mean, there's like literally a subreddit for everything under the sun. Um, I, every, I wrote the book about Reddit and I still encounter new red, subreddits every day or people mention them to me and I'm like... Wow. Okay. Like toast uh, on a wall or chairs on a, underwater. You know. Uh, yeah, the hard hitting stuff. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> but there's so there's communities about Bitcoin, about weed stocks, about uh, trading penny stocks. I think like weed stocks and penny stocks both have more than sixty thousand subscribers. Uh, what's like what? Give me the ecosystem of sort of finance and speculation um, on Reddit. Sure. Um, so. We do have communities that cover just about anything. And so as it relates to finance and investing, we actually cover pretty much the whole gamut there. So on one side, you do have the, the probably the speculative uh, ones around crypto and, and, and stocks. And you've got, we've got this funny community of Wall Street bets where they kind of make a, elaborate Wall bets. bets. Wall Street bets. Uh -huh. um, but then we also have just investing. Um, and, and, and business. And then on the, on, the, on the other side, after you've lost all of your money um, speculating, <laughs> we've got um, actually really powerful communities um, in personal finance. Mm -hmm. um, and one, one's called personal finance. And, and that's just like humans giving advice to other humans, like not necessarily professionals. Um, users on Reddit are generally somewhat anonymous, um, and in those communities in particular, right? Yeah, and, and this is what I think where Reddit really, really shines, because this is the sort of content that's hard to find elsewhere. And so I, I was just um, browsing it this morning, and you've got a kid who just got kicked out of his, his house, he's 18, and just wondering, like, what's the next step to take? And, and the community's giving him really good advice, like, just sensible things, like, 
finds your birth certificate. <laughs> um, other people who are living paycheck to paycheck and trying to get out of debt. Uh, our top post last week was somebody who was warning the community about uh, debt collection scammers. And so this is the, the I think what uh, Reddit does best, which is expose the, the realness of, of life. Yeah. And people helping each other for no other reason than to help each other. That, you know, I, was, I went through this once too and I have some advice to give. Mm -hmm. Or I'm in a time of need. And, and, and that sort of thing I think is, is really powerful. And, and, and that's the sort of stuff that makes us really proud is when we're uh, elevating people and, and enriching their lives. Right. One of my favorite use cases of, of Reddit is pointing out hypocrisy. Um, I love r slash malicious compliance. It's like bad bureaucracy and like things that defeat themselves in terms of policy in a company. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, the, the casual anarchi anarchism of, of, of Redditors is, is the engine that keeps it going, I think. Right, right. And how do you maintain that kind of pseudo-anarchist spirit while growing a huge company? I mean, you have a mandate to get to a billion users. How, how do you do that while keeping it rough around the edges, you know, and, and not turning it into the airbrushed, bright, shiny internet? Uh, or, or will you? I don't know. Uh, well, that's actually a really great question. Uh, one of our values uh, internal to the company is keep Reddit real. And, and what this means is uh, we should be proud of who we are, both as, as people um, and, and on the site. You know, Reddit is an edgier place. It is a very authentic and genuine place. And people are not perfect, and nor is Reddit. But that's actually one of our differentiators. And that's one of the reasons people come to us, is because you're not getting a sanitized view of humanity. And uh, often I, I describe it, if, if we were TV shows, Facebook can be friends, and, and you know, we can be The Simpsons. Um, and, 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 I, and I think that works well for us. But fundamentally... What's Twitter? Uh, <laughs> That's uh, I wish I was a little clever. I could come up with something. Um, uh, but you know, over the years, right, the, the, despite a, the, a product that didn't change or age very well for you know, eight years and, and all of the, the adventures that we were just describing, Reddit continued to grow. And, and that's because there's a realness there. And there's, there's content and experiences you can find there that you won't find anywhere else. And so that really is one of our core values is keep Reddit real. Mm -hmm. um, can you watch the markets on Reddit? Like, can you, is there a way to take the pulse of people? I mean, this massive, massive user base. Like, I don't know, what have you learned about, about uh, speculation of, of yeah, I, stocks and finance right now. I mean, what, what, what Reddit's really good at is, is you won't see a, a stock ticker on Reddit. Right. But you'll pick up the, the sentiment um, uh, of, of what's going on, both in uh, uh, finance and in politics. I think yeah. Reddit is a, is a leading indicator. Yeah, I was going to mention politics. Um, there's, I mean, the most massive, one of the most massive Donald Trump communities on the whole global yeah. internet is, are the Donalds. And, and before that, in 2008, we were one of the first places yeah. where Obama made an appearance yeah. online. And, yeah. and so you can start to see which way the, the wind is blowing long before uh, it actually does, which mm -hmm. is why I'm particularly excited uh, coming into the midterms. Well, speaking of the midterms coming up, um, you have a huge job to do there in terms of uh, content, just like the other social sites, Reddit has had Russian interference and Russian influence and attempted spreading of disinformation. Um, how, do you, how do you police that going forward? And how do you, moreover, I mean, I think, I think you've kind of handled the, the Russian stuff most recently um, fairly well. It was a smaller influence than um, we've seen elsewhere. But when you have you know, political speech, which is what the First Amendment is meant to protect and what you've tried to uphold on Reddit as always protected, uh, oftentimes sort of overlapping or being synonymous with hate speech um, and bullying and harassment, which you forbid on the site. How do you, how do you manage that? Uh, content moderation is, is really challenging. Uh, and so I think that's the first thing to acknowledge is there's not a, there's not a simple answer. And so I do think um, we have to be very careful not to reduce a very complex issue into a, a, a simple decision. Uh, the way we think about it at Reddit is try, we try to separate behavior from beliefs. Uh, beliefs, we believe, are, are sacred. And you are free on Reddit to have whatever belief you like. Uh, but it's your behaviors uh, that we care about and enforce. 
um, in, in, when we're trying to make any decision on content. Um, and our content policy is, is fairly straightforward. No bullying, um, no harassment, no spam, no involuntary sexualization, uh, no violent speech, uh, no illegal, you know, don't sell drugs on Reddit. Um, <laughs> or guns. Or guns. Uh, you know, we, we look for content policies that can be uh, are as objective as possible and can be enforced as consistently as possible. I mean, so around those behaviors or misbehaviors, that's, that's where we spend a lot of our time. But as you mentioned, when it comes to politics, um, I think political speech is very important. And I think uh, neither the Reddit, the company, or me personally, or our government should be deciding what people can and cannot say. Uh, and I think that's a very risky proposition. I know that's a, that's a conversation that comes up a lot these days. And so I do feel like we're walking a tight line, um, but we try to be very thoughtful and considered and consistent uh, in our actions. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Uh, I mean, but beliefs can be dangerous, right? Sure. But you're not gonna police that. Um, I think we have to be very, very careful. You know, one, one of the things when I first came back to Reddit that uh, my naive optimism coming in, I was like, I know just what to do. We are going to draw a very clear line of what is acceptable and not on Reddit. And then we are gonna enforce it very consistently and aggressively and we'll set the tone and we'll clean it up very fast. Uh, what, I have somebody laughed. Um, <laughs> uh, which, which is the appropriate reaction. It, it, it is impossible to draw a perfectly clear line. Right. Um, there's always a gray area. Um, there's, there's, uh, and, and you'll see both users, you know, taking your line and walking right up to it and sticking their nose over it and trying to really test your boundaries. And you'll see people inadvertently bumping into it all the time. And as, as we just see in our country and worldwide, the tone of the conversation changing. And so um, while there are, I think, you know, the 99% of content that you see uh, on Reddit and in the real world, I think, from people is, is overwhelmingly positive. You know, I think Reddit is a, a reflection of what's going on in the real world. And yeah. I think people are overwhelmingly good and doing their best. Mm -hmm. It's actually one of the worldviews I've developed at Reddit. But you do have people misbehaving uh, in, in, a, in a variety of ways. And I think adapting with them and adapting with new challenges and uh, the new ways that people communicate uh, is a challenge, but it's something where we spend a lot of our time thinking about. Mm -hmm. you know, we have uh, a number of teams dedicated to this. Right? Most visibly is our community team me and our community team. We are the, the human face of Reddit in our community. Uh, then you have our trust and safety team, which are the, the faceless, nameless Super people. Super secret. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, those are the people who enforce our content policies. Right. And then we have our anti-evil team, which is the engineering team that supports uh, both of those teams at scale, building right. tools, finding misbehavior and coordinated uh, attacks and that sort of stuff and trying to keep that down. So that's like, you got good cop, bad cop, and robocop. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> exactly. um, so one more question, then we'll open it up to the audience. Um, you have, uh, Reddit's always had sort of a, well not always, but since the acquisition has had sort of a fascinating and somewhat bizarre uh, structure, being majority owned by Condé Nast, um, and then spun out to Advance Publications. Um, you, so Advance still owns the majority of Reddit, despite that you're raising, you've raised venture capital, um, you raised 200 million last year. Um, what, is it, what does that mean for your future? You know, what is the plan going forward? Are you gonna raise more money? Is there an IPO in the future? Well, um, the first step for us, uh, so, so Advance, Advance and Condé, I use them interchangeably yeah. when, I, when yeah. I speak. Um, they've actually been very good to us. Yeah. And, and one of the things I often reflect back on is we wouldn't exist uh, without them because in 2006 when we sold the company, uh, we had no idea what we were doing. Um, and, and what's nice about Advance uh, and our new investors is they're all long-term investors. So we don't have uh, pressure from our investors to uh, find liquidity as soon as possible, mm -hmm. which is something uh, a lot of our peers, certainly in the Bay Area, go through. It right. um, can be really challenging. So You have like the friendliest board to you that we have I a, can think of. A very healthy board. <laughs> and, it, and, it's, and it's really nice because they all believe in our mission, right? Which is, uh, and, and this is what I really want to focus on. Uh, going forward over the next couple of years is take what we do for our core users who are fanatically loyal to Reddit, right? Who get our logo tattooed on them. And not just like our normal logo, but our, our joke logos as well. Uh, and the reason they do this is because uh, they have found significant value in Reddit uh, in their personal lives. 
Um, I want to take uh, what we do for them and do that for everybody in the world. And if, if we can provide that sense of community and belonging to everybody in the world, I will be very, very proud. And I think we have an opportunity to do so. And that opportunity doesn't come along very often. And so I think with it comes the moral obligation to try. Mm -hmm. and at the same time, we would like to build a valuable and successful business. So, you know, what that means over the next couple of years um, from like a, a corporate standpoint, you know, I, I, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I think if we can provide value to our users um, and create a healthy business, we are moving in the right direction. So how many years out would an IPO be? Probably 35. You know, <laughs> I don't, every time I acknowledge that, it's just like, Reddit's right. IPOing tomorrow. Right, um, right, right. You know, I think we still have a long way to go. I want to make sure, you know, we look at our peers and we look at what's going on in the market, uh, and our value, keep Reddit real, is very important right. to me. So um, I want to make sure that if we do something like that, that uh, we can continue to maintain the courage of our convictions, to operate the company the way that we believe is best, uh, and set ourselves, put ourselves in a position where we can withstand the pressures of, of public markets. Right. And, and so I think we still have a, a little ways to go yet. Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, let's take some, some questions. Um, I know we have mics that'll be coming around, um, sort of hand delivered to you. Here we go. Hey, what do you think is the most uh, morally challenging decision you had to make when there was a clear fork in the road between optimizing for the health and profitability of the com a company in the long run and uh, doing what you think was good for the world? Um, you know, often I, I think there are a lot of challenging decisions, right, when we're trying to, to balance tensions between uh, providing, you know, value to our customers and, and, and growing the business. And so I think what's really important is actually thinking very carefully, is there a path that can solve both of those things? Um, and I know that sounds like kind of a, maybe a, 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 a cop-out answer. Um, and so let me try to entertain you by thinking of something difficult. I, I mean, we read it in our DNA. Um, for example, the first, in the early days of Reddit, and still now, like we didn't collect email addresses. We didn't ask for your full name. Or, or date of birth, or gender, or where you live, um, which are really interesting decisions for somebody whose primary business model is selling ads. And so we've actually made a lot of decisions on behalf of our users and their privacy to the detriment of the business. Now, I feel somewhat vindicated over the last year as watching our peers struggle with what do they do with all of this personal data and the, the moral dilemmas that they're faced. We've actually been somewhat insulated from that because we just don't have the data. Um, and th that, you know, there's always pressure, like, can we uh, improve our ads business going that route? And the answer is probably yes, but I think we'd be compromising something that's very core uh, to the way Reddit works and why we exist. Uh, and I'll, I was just explaining this before. Reddit doesn't exist because uh, of our, you know, beautiful product. Um, it exists because we didn't build a business that's predicated on uh, harvesting and selling your personal data. And so we find other ways of doing it, right? We, we know your interests and your passions, and we allow you to be um, more authentic and genuine and make connections that you can't make anywhere else. And this actually creates an opportunity for advertisers to kind of meet their customers uh, where they are. So uh, I think there's always two sides to this, and it's not always easy, but that's the way we think about it. Great. Uh, I'm Venkatesh. I had... Uh... Hi. Uh, I had analytics at the Washington Post. Uh, how are you dealing with uh, fake news uh, at scale? How are we dealing with fake news at scale? So there, this is one of those complex issues. Uh, so I can talk at length about this. Let me try to limit it to about you know, a minute. So the first thing uh, is to, that's important about Reddit is that Reddit is many communities. And so many of those communities are news communities. And in fact, a lot of our users come to Reddit for news. We're actually the most trusted source of news for millennials. Um, our news communities are very heavily moderated. Um, most of them are pretty strict about uh, what sources are allowed to be posted. Um, they have strict fact-checking uh, methodology. And, and the reason people come to Reddit for news is because um, the, the it's, it's through the moderation, both by our moderators and what I would call it community moderation, mm -hmm. right? So everything on Reddit is, uh, has up and down arrows for users to vote up or down on things. And so our communities also set the tone of conversation. So in the comments on news on Reddit, 
uh, you will find uh, fact checking, you'll find alternative sources, uh, you'll find a ton of commentary. So um, bullshit doesn't have a long lifespan on Reddit. Now, at the same time, uh, what we work on on the, on, the, on the back end as a technology problem is trying to prevent groups of people from uh, manipulating Reddit. So we don't have an overt ban on, I think, what people might call fake news. We try to stay out of the uh, being the arbiters of truth and instead empower our communities to um, surface good content, surface rebuttals, uh, and that generally works pretty well. But we do see groups of users, whether it's uh, uh, you know, foreign influence, which we have seen some of that, but actually much more common is a publisher actually just spamming and trying to manipulate Reddit for traffic. Um, looking for coordinated groups of users, uh, vote cheating and manipulating that sort of thing. And we've gotten a lot more sophisticated over the years at how we, at how we prevent that. Right, right. I love that your kind of original spam algorithms like still have this great use in like fighting botnets and fighting fake news. Um, that's super cool. That said, like Reddit is home to a million conspiracy theories, right? I mean, you can just go to our conspiracy theory. You can just there are communities dedicated to fake news. Like you don't shut those down. Well, um, sometimes we do actually. Uh, we do have communities dedicated to conspiracies, uh, and. You know, those, the tone of those have definitely changed over the last couple of years. Uh, you know, uh, prior to the current administration, they were, I, I don't know, run-of-the-mill conspiracies. Totally, UFOs and whatever. And yes. Um, <laughs> uh, the last couple of years, I think, have been really challenging for everybody. Um, and, and so the bigger conspiracies, you know, we have actually removed from Reddit, right? When they go from... And conspiracies, I think, are actually a really great example of one of the complex decisions because every once in a while they turn out to be true. But also every once in a while they're not true and they can turn into, I think, bad behavior in the real world. So with things like Pizzagate, we you know, removed that community because we could see that trending in the wrong direction. And I'm glad we did. And so we try to... Uh, those are the issues. When I talk about where's that fine line, those are the issues that we wrestle with and we try to be very thoughtful about. Um, but... Uh, and, and we are looking closely because I don't think it, it would be, I think it would be problematic to say you're not allowed to talk about conspiracies. I mean, just look at the world we live in. Um, I think there's a, anyway, enough said. Um, but uh, we have to be very careful there and be very thoughtful. Yeah. Good. Uh, what is the best part and the worst part about your job? Um, great question. Uh, the best part of my job is, is, is getting to work on Reddit. You know, I, 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 everybody who works at Reddit, we, 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 get to, we get to work on something. There's only 400 of us, and we were 280 at the beginning of the year, so we're a very small team uh, relative to our company size and relative to our, um, no, right. well, well, to our, our yeah. you know, influence in the world and relative to our peers. And we get to really meaningful impact, meaningfully impact people's lives. And that's something we're very, very proud of. Uh, and we get to actually provide community and belonging to people and, and, and friendship. And uh, we, we, we feel we're fulfilling the promise of the internet. And so I feel very proud to be a part of that. Um, I think the worst part of my job is, uh, is a symptom of the, the level of discourse in the United States right now, which... Uh, you know, I, I feel very passionately about um, the founding principles of the United States um, in, in free expression and, and, and what the United States means to me. And it's frustrating sometimes to be, as a CEO, as, as a representative of Reddit, a, a platform that has many communities representing uh, both the far left and the far right and everywhere in between. It's sometimes frustrating being reduced to a caricature by both sides. I hate that there are two sides at all. Yeah. That's, it's a very frustrating concept. Um, and so uh, always having my words, I think, interpreted in the most cynical possible light can be frustrating. But uh, I think it's important that at Reddit we just continue to uh, uh, stay, stay on message, explain why we do things, try to be as thoughtful and transparent as possible, and, and let the conversation you know, be what it will. Um, maybe one more? Did you, is there one up here? Oh, we got a mic ready. Yeah. There you go. So uh, my personal experience with Reddit is kind of what you were referring to, where uh, you have that internal value of realness in the community. Um, 
I think there's a general trend of questions where a lot of people are asking about that. And you've done a lot of thinking inwards about how Reddit can be that community of realness over time. I also imagine you have relationships with the other companies in Silicon Valley that might be so-called peers or online communities. What advice might you give them or, or things that they specifically haven't done that Reddit has and the reasons why you've generally avoided that besides like just generally collecting data? Um, I know it's a problem that Facebook, Twitter, and your other peers struggle with as well. Yeah, this is, this is a question that um, I've been getting a lot sort of after, since my book came out. Um, people are asking me continuously, like, what can, what can Facebook and Twitter learn from Reddit? So first I'll start with one of the things uh, I observe of, of, about all of us in the space and online, which is we are, um, there's a new class of problem that we haven't seen before that I think we actually um, created, unfortunately which is the ability for any two people to, 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 to talk to each other without, without uh, limitation or boundaries. Which, by the way, I think is the most powerful, uh, positive uh, result of the internet. But at the same time, uh, it allows people to, for example, just talk to me that otherwise would have to know my name, know my email address, know where I live, know where I'm going to be. And when you're communicating in person, and, I, and I've had this experience many times. People get fired up about something that's going on on Reddit, and they come to me in person. I think I'm batting uh, about 1,000% on finding common ground with people and, 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 and finding uh, a way to be copacetic going forward. And over personal messages on Reddit, I'd say I'm about 90%. Uh, but when you, have a, 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 when you can just say anything about anybody without recourse, and I think this is true of the entire internet, uh, it dehumanizes the conversation, and I think that's the challenge we're wrestling with. So the way we think about it at Reddit is, you know, even though we are not obsessed with real-world identity, what I think is very important is the, the humanness uh, of, of the conversation. One of our other values is remember the human. And to the extent that we can make the interactions you have on Reddit uh, mirror the interactions you would have in everyday life, uh, that can be really, really powerful. And so on Reddit, we have this notion of, of karma, reputation, which started off as kind of a, I don't want to say a joke, but we, <laughs> we didn't think of the long-term ramifications of it, you know, 13 years ago when we started the company. That people would have like hundreds of thousands of karma points. Or millions in some millions. cases. Um, but that's really powerful. So I think that the reputation and elevating the, the conversation is, is really important. So... Um, we're by no means perfect at it, but I think we've done a really good job. And when I think about these difficult issues, which is how do people treat each other, how do we handle uh, challenging content or fake news or, or, or these things, um, I think that uh, one of our core strategies, our strategic pillars, is empower our users. Right? Anytime we push these decisions into our user base. So where does the content come from? What is the title? Who's voting it? The communities, all this. Anytime we elevate our community to make these decisions and be creative, they do really incredible things. And so uh, the advice I would give to anybody in this space is empower your users instead of thinking that you, the, 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 the you know, product people and engineers, have all of the right answers. Mm -hmm. But people, we are a naturally collaborative species. And I think if you can uh, enable that, people will generally uh, do really positive, incredible things.